Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The Honorable Carlos Bosborn, 78, Secretary of the General Bertrand Mahone, 37, Assistant Commandant of the Marines. Lieutenant General William M. Jones, Commander, U.S. Marines War Force Pacific, and Commander General, Fleet Marine Force Pacific. Lieutenant General James Adams, Deputy Commandant for Programs and Resources. Vice Admiral Daniel Cheever, Commander, Daniel Air Force Base. Lieutenant General Robert Hunter, Commander, Air Force Base. Lieutenant General Robert Hunter, Commander, Air Force Base. Sergeant Major Carlos A. Ruiz, Sergeant Major of the Marines. Major Baker Straw, City of San Clemente. Lieutenant General Edward Hammond, United States Marine Corps, retired. Lieutenant General Terry Robin, United States Marine Corps, retired. Lieutenant General Robert Walsh, United States Marine Corps, retired. Major General Michael J. Portrophy, Commanding General, Third Marine Aircraft Company. Major General Benjamin T. Watson, Commanding General, First Marine Division. Major General Thomas Savage, Commanding General, Marine Air Ground Task Force Training Center. Brigadier General Robert C. Fulton, Deputy Commanding General, One Marine Expeditionary Force. Brigadier General Jason G. Gilbert, Commanding General, Marine Corps Installations West. Rear Admiral Randall Peck, Commander, Expeditionary Strike Group 3. Brigadier General Andrew Needle, Commanding General, 1st Marine Logistics Group. Brigadier General James A. Ryan II, Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruit Depot San Diego. Brigadier General Robert B. E. Rowe, Assistant Wing Commander, 3rd Marine Aircraft Group. Brigadier General Robert Wild, Assistant Division Commander, 1st Marine Division. Rear Admiral Richard Meyer, Deputy Commander, 3rd Fleet. Rear Admiral Mark Gomes, United States Navy, retired. Brigadier General Kevin Clay, United States Marine Corps, retired. Brigadier General Paul Ellison, United States Marine Corps, retired. Senior Executive Service James Hall, retired. Medal of Honor recipient Colonel James Clemmon, United States Air Force, retired. Major Billy Hall, veteran of World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, who served with one man. Dr. Charles Cram, Silver Star recipient for actions during the Battle of Iwo Jima. Now, taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commander of Troops for today's parade, Colonel Samuel L. Meyer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commanding General, welcome to the Change of Command Ceremony for One Marine Expeditionary Force. Today's parade is being executed by the proud and radiant sailors of One Marine Expeditionary Force. Please rise for the invocation delivered by Captain Henry F. Olson Jr., Chaplain Corps, United States Navy. Please join me as we pray. 
Gracious Father, your presence is welcome here today as we witness the time-honored tradition of change of command. However, we know your presence has been with both Major General Gary and Lieutenant General Cedarhold long before this day. You have blessed them with great success both professionally and personally. For General Gary, I humbly ask for your continued provision for he and Denise as you grant them travel mercies as they travel across this great nation he has defended for many years. Give him favor among those he will lead in his next command and great success as he builds on the firm foundation provided for him. Give him strength and courage for the task. Grant success to Brad and Jasmine as they begin their journey anew in D.C. as well. For General Cedarholm and Becky, thank you for the safe passage you have provided them as they have traveled far to take the helm of one map. I ask your continued blessings on his family as they settle in a new location and begin to grow roots in our community. Guide their steps to new relationships and to renew, to renew old. Grant General Cedarholm strength, endurance, and courage as he takes the helm. Grant him wisdom as he guides us in the days ahead and favor for those he leads and with those placed in authority over him. I ask this prayer in your strong name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Paul! Present day parades in the Marine Corps have their basis in both history and tradition. The mass formation of troops on one long line at close interval made possible the massing of firepower from the muzzle loaded muskets of the past. The action forms the line of battle, and in those early days, that line consisted of two or three ranks, much like the parade you will see today. The adjutant for today's parade is First Lieutenant Jesse Nash. The marching units are now being called to attention, and the adjutant's command, sound adjutant's call, will begin today's ceremony. Third-wing aircraft team, 
and all the elements of Christmas, money, and stationary units, no position, and operation is welcome. During their operation, one that arranged to have some security operations, humanitarian aid distribution, and collaboration with humanitarian peace and forces to protect and aid the women and settlers that are accomplished and done. In the 2000s, one that played a crucial role in both Operation Enduring Freedom and Operation Iraqi Freedom.
的，对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对我不会忘记你，我不会忘记你。我不会忘记你，我不会忘记你。我不会忘记你，我不会忘记你。
parade adjutant now present the assembled command to the commander of troops. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors for the Secretary of the Navy.
now taking his position, is the reviewing officer for today's parade, the 37th Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Christopher Mahoney. Honors to General Mahoney. Now taking his position is the Commanding General, 1 Marine Expeditionary Force, Major General Bradford J. Aaron. Honors to Major General Aaron.
Sergeant Major Peter A. Fiao, Command Future Enlisted Leader for One Marine Expeditionary Force, is delivering the colors to the Commanding General. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Major General Bradford J. Gary, Subject Relinquishment of Command. Effective 10 hundred, 16 February 2024, you stand relieved of your duties as the Commanding General of One Marine Expeditionary Force and will assume all duties and responsibilities as the Deputy Commandant for Aviation. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps. From Commandant of the Marine Corps to Lieutenant General Michael S. Uhohan, subject, Assumption of Command. Effective 10 hundred, 16 February 2024, you will assume the duties as Commanding General, 1 Marine Expeditionary Force. Signed, Eric M. Smith, General, United States Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for honors to the Command General, One Marine Commissioner Force, Lieutenant General Michael S. Cedarhome. Honors to Lieutenant General Cedarhome. Thank you. Please be seated. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro.
citizens are to be promoted, and all colors are present. Very well, carry on. Aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem and remain standing for the promotion. States of America, to all who shall see these presents, greeting, know ye that we're exposing special trust and confidence in the patriotism, fidelity, and abilities of Bradford J. Gary, I do, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, appoint him a Lieutenant General in the U.S. Marine Corps, to rank as such from 16 February 2024, while serving as the Deputy Commandant for Aviation, Headquarters, United States Marine Corps, in accordance with the provisions of Title 10, U.S. Code, Section 601. Given under my hand, in the District of Columbia, this fifth day of December, in the year of our Lord, 2023, and in the 247th year of the independence of the United States. By the President, signed, Eric M. Smith, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Signed, Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy. Now join General Gary as his wife and daughter. Better 
extraordinary moment. And I'm so honored that I've been invited here to be with you all. It's an honor to be your 78th Secretary of the Navy. And I've been so now for two and a half years. But I can't help but reflect back to my very first night as Secretary when I swore the oath of office in front of the Iwo Jima Memorial in honor of all the Marine that I have served with, in addition to the sailors, since I was a young ensign graduating from the Naval Academy, but in particular honor to all the Marines that served in Afghanistan and Iraq over the past 20 years. It was a special moment for me then, and it's a special moment for me now to be with each and every one of you who've given so much in service to our country. As we celebrate the service of Lieutenant General Gearing and welcome Lieutenant General Cedar home as he assumes command of one Marine Expeditionary Force, thank you. First and foremost, I would like to thank Lieutenant General Gearing's family, including Denise and Jack. Denise is a Marine Corps spouse. You have shouldered an incredible burden, taking care of the Marines, sailors, and families of one map while also taking care of the command at home as well, too. Thank you for your service as a spouse and champion of our One Meth family. And to all the families out there, to all the spouses, to all the children, thank you for your service to our nation as well. Jasmine, thank you for your years of sacrifice and support and of love. I know growing up as a military child was certainly not easy, but I also know that both you and Bradford were and continue to be a source of encouragement and inspiration to your father every single day. I also want to thank Lieutenant General Cedarholm's family for being here today. Welcome to your wife Becky, son John, daughter-in-law Lindsay, mother Sylvia, mother-in-law Jennifer, and brother-in-law Lieutenant General John Fleming as well. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge again Medal of Honor recipient and Lieutenant General Seahawks father-in-law, Colonel James Fleming, United States Air Force. Sir, thank you for your service to our nation, for the sacrifices that you made, and the courage that you demonstrated when you served as a very young Lieutenant of the United States Air Force. You truly served as an example to all our service members across all services about everything that's right about our country. Thank you also to General Mahoney for your service as our assistant commandant as General Smith prepares to take back the reins. Now, rumor has it, General, I heard recently that you might have General Smith tied down in the basement of his home. <laughs> he might be enjoying this job a little bit too much. But I did call Trish last night and she confirmed for me that he was in fact not tied down in his basement and that he is recovering extremely well and we look forward to having him back as our commandant. But in the meantime, the sacrifices that you and your family have made and your exceptional service as the Assistant Commandant and Acting Commandant of the Marine Corps, we simply cannot say enough to you for the leadership that you have demonstrated during these difficult times for our Marines. So thank you very much, Commandant. And thank you to all the many distinguished visitors, guests, families, and friends joining us here today for this ceremony as one Marine Corps family. It was with great pleasure that I stand before you to witness this momentous occasion, the changing of command and responsibility from one commanding general to the other. But before I go any further, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the tragic loss of five Marines from Flying Tigers earlier this month during a training exercise. My prayers are with the loved ones of these Marines. It is a sobering reminder of the dangerous work that you do every day to ensure that our freedoms and our safety will always be there. 
thank you all for your selfless service to this country and just ask for just a few moments of silence in their honor. Thank you. Today we face increasing instability in the world. From Russia's deadly assault of Ukraine to the escalating hostilities in the Red Seas by the Houthis. People's Republic of China remains a critical threat, rapidly modernizing and expanding its military in an attempt to reshape the Indo-Pacific region and the international system. And so I am filled with pride knowing that one Marine Expeditionary Force is a firm pillar of our Marine Corps indeed our national defense. As the Marine Corps' largest Marine Air Ground Task Force, the Warfighting MEF, one MEF, plays an integral role in regional stability. One MEF is deployable anywhere, anytime, and under any circumstances, and you do just that. I was proud to have served with you during Desert Storm and Desert Shield as well, too. The Warfighting MEF is indeed a well-deserved nickname. Your footprint reaches every inch of the globe. This past year alone, one MEF participated in theater security cooperation exercises and strengthened ties with our international partners. Through these exercises, we demonstrated the warfighting proudness of our Marine Corps and also reaffirmed our position as a training partner of choice with our international partners and allies from around the entire globe. The threats we face today require interoperability, modernization, and flexibility. While incredible challenges to our national security exist, our Marine Corps has adopted its poised to meet every single one of them. The Marine Corps has led the joint force in aggressive modernization to meet the challenges of tomorrow, while remaining ready at a moment's notice to respond to the crisis of today. One MEF is the leading edge of that modernization where theory meets real-world application. With game-changing new concepts, such as the MRS, Marine Rotational Forces, in Darwin, and now under your watch, MRF Southeast Asia, delivering scalable, tailable Marine Air Ground Task Forces to the Priority Theater. I was very proud to have been with the Marines in Darwin just last year, seeing how they accomplished their mission at the pointy end of the spear. The National Defense Strategy called our allies and our partners as sources of strategic strength, and that indeed is a fact. There is no outfit that better develops those relationships than one MEF. On its most recent rotation, MRF Darwin, embedded with our Australian friends for most of 2023, participating in some of the largest bilateral and multilateral training exercises in the entire world, exhibiting its capabilities across the spectrum of conflict and crisis response to combat operations while integrating with more than a dozen partner nations. MRF Southeast Asia deployed its second rotation last year in support of security cooperation exercises with a number of partners, including the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. And those Marines are already delivering real-world benefits to our allies and partners. Marines and sailors from the 1st Marine Logistics Group deployed to Palau, where I'm going next week, and supported improvements to the Palauan infrastructure. And from June to September 2023, 200 Marines and sailors participated in Koa Moana, conducting theater security operations in Papua New Guinea and the Federated States of Micronesia, and strengthening our relationship with partner nations in Oceania, nations which have become increasingly important to the security of the theater in the face of malign actors in the Pacific. In addition, the 15th MU completed dynamic training cycle. We'll deploy with the Boxer ARC, which includes the box of the Somerset and the USS Harper's Ferry. The Boxer ARG will execute maritime security operations, theater security cooperation exercises, crisis response, all while maintaining the forward presence of our Navy and Marine Corps. To think that at any given moment in time, over 30,000 of our Marines are deployed globally, performing and defending our national security is truly, truly exceptional and something that the American people have to understand. As we face threats today in the Middle East and in the Mediterranean, the Bataan Art U stands in defense of our nation. And the Eisenhower Battle Group in the Middle East defends our national security every single day. This is not commonplace, folks. This is real, real special. And it's defense of our national security and the economic security interests of our nation. 
And the American people simply can't forget that. In closing, as Marine Corps doctrinal publication once states, and I quote, war is both timeless and ever-changing, unquote. And one myth has evolved to meet the varied demands of our national security and our defense. While modernization and new technologies give us the competitive edge during combat, the ultimate reason for one mass lethality is indeed its people, its Marines, an advantage that gives adversaries pause. The sailors and Marines who make up one mass are pivotal to our success, which brings me back to the commanding generals themselves, incoming and outgoing, and the enormous task of leading one mess. Lieutenant Joe Gehring, thank you for your service to your nation, to our Marine Corps. Last August, when you took command, General Smith told you that you weren't an acting commander. You didn't act like an acting commander or a full commander. You were in command of one mess. And you certainly executed that mission with extraordinary professionalism and success. You took care of our forces' most precious assets. And I wish you and your family the best of luck in Washington, D.C., as you assume the role of Deputy Commandant for Aviation and fight battles and conflicts of a different kind. Lieutenant <laughs> General Cedarhome, congratulations. You're now leaving Washington, D.C. <laughs> you have my full confidence in leading these sailors and Marines. We face incredible challenges and threats ahead, but I trust that under your command, the men and women of the Navy and Marine Corps will excel as an undefeatable fighting force. Secretary of the Navy, I'm proud to serve alongside each and every one of you. In fact, I serve you. I serve all of the Marines who are here today. I am proud and I look forward to the many successes of one map under your command. May God bless each and every one of you. May God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a message from the Commandant of the Marine Corps for Lieutenant General Gary. Gila, congratulations on a job well done. The accomplishments of one Marine Expeditionary Force during your tenure are a direct reflection of your outstanding leadership. With you at the helm, one must ensure vital innovation within the MAGTAC and prepare us well to advance our responsiveness in an ever-changing and uncertain security context. Your comprehensive and holistic approach to readiness will have lasting and positive impacts for years to come. Through your commitment to modernization, you substantially advance the posture and lethality of the one team. I also greatly appreciate your efforts to strengthen our relationship with the local community and ensure our Marine Station there are representing our core appropriately. The Marine Corps is grateful to you and Denise for your leadership as well as everything you do for our Marines and sailors and their families. I look forward to having you back in the Pentagon as Deputy Commandant for Aviation. For Lieutenant General Cedarcom, home, as you assume command of one man, know that you have my total trust and confidence. I know you will set the bar high and bring the same outstanding leadership you have demonstrated as Deputy Commandant for Aviation throughout your career. Congratulations and best wishes to you and Becky as you take responsibility for one mass daily operations. Semper Fidelis, Eric M. Smith, General, U.S. Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, the 37th Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Mahoney. Secretary, thank you for those words. I'm, I don't think there's much left on the table uh, to talk about, but I will start by welcoming all the other general officers, the admirals, the sergeants, the major, the master gunner, sergeants, and all the friends, uh, deep bench of friends of the one man. To deal with these, congratulations on the promotion, and congratulations on a very successful, albeit short, tour. You know, about seven months ago, general officer. Nominations were put on hold. They were disrupted uh, for holds in Congress. There's someone sitting here today that through his aggressive efforts, but he won't take credit for it, and pressure, 
help them and eventually break those holds, and that's our secretary, Carlos Del Toro. So, sir, I'll take a little bit of credit for uh, taking, uh, announcing that the back uh, pressure that you put on it was significant. In that seven month hold, there was a lot of fanfare, a lot of press, a lot of national team. Uh, but at headquarters Marine Corps and in the Department of Navy, I tell you, there was not. The decisions made were very, very simple. They were very easy. They were frankly unremarkable for this reason. And in the Marine Corps, when there's a hole, if someone goes down or there's disruption, we live by the maxim, next Marine up. And in this case, Brad Gehring was the next Marine up. I've flown with this Marine, I've trained with him, I've been in combat with him, we've been instructed together at Mach 1. One word to describe, he's a thoroughbred. He thinks fast, he runs fast, he leads fast. All the things that the Secretary laid on the table, deployments, employments, all very, very true. And let me just put a finer point on it. There's a balance there between current readiness and crisis response, which is our core mission, and continuing to press on modernization for the fight that we hope doesn't come, but that might come. My evidence is here in these Marines, my evidence is in the equipment, my evidence is in the posture of one mouth, both to provide, as the song says, response in every climate and place, and to push modernization forward. Theo and Denise, uh, congratulations again, and I look forward to a couple of cigars and maybe some adult beverages in the barracks when you get there. There was no actor. In the Marine Corps, we don't act for you. You either do or you don't. And my friend, you did. To Homie and Becky, Team Cedar Home, as we know, Becky is the captain of that team. Uh, I can't lay a percentage on it, but it's over 50. Congratulations to you. I know you missed the weather in D.C. Uh, you look going to report out on it. Homie, uh, your strategic vision, your operational acumen, and your truck stop wisdom has become legend. The pathway has been set by that gentleman to the right, but I know you will continue down. I know you will continue to push forward toward those design concepts and make them real, once again, for the fight that made the film. But also, I know you will be ready to take and put the one left boot on the throat of people who may require that sort of therapy. So congratulations to you both. Semper Fidelis, my friend, you are the next man up. Thank you. All right, uh, so a lot to unpack for me today. Uh, Pretty big event for the Garings today, but Mr. Secretary, uh, first and foremost, sir, thank you very much for being here. What an incredible honor, uh, an honor to the Marine themselves, a one but certainly to the Garing family, sir, for you taking the time out of your very busy schedule. And for those words, uh, really, really important. Uh, so thank you, sir. Back next, sir, great to see you as always, and, and I appreciate your leadership uh, incredibly, and I do really appreciate your comments, sir. So thank you also for taking the time. Uh, to General Journey, sir, Sergeant Major Ruiz, Colonel Fleming, to all our distinguished guests, our Marines, our sailors, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And, and I'll tell you, this is a great day in the history of one now. Uh, today's all about chapters. Today we take the opportunity to close a chapter, and we open up the next chapter. And that's the chapter that the Cedar Homes are going to write over here at one now. So this is nothing but a great day, and it's all about opening up a new chapter. And certainly over the last couple of weeks, I've taken a lot of time to reflect on command. And as I reflected on command preparing for today, it really took me back to the day I took command. And I was standing right here, and I was talking to those that were in attendance, and I was explaining that I had this overwhelming sense of humility after I took command. And where that humility came from, the source of that, goes back to this wall at the CP. So there's a picture of every previous commanding general in one man's personal force. And for those of you who are not familiar with our legacy, just look at the program guide and you'll see some of the folks that have commanded this organization. I think you'll have a good appreciation on where that humility came from. So today I'm standing here once again and I'm feeling humble. But I can tell you that source of humility is not from some pictures on a wall. 
That source of humility is from the Marines and the sailors that are standing behind me. I'll tell you, they embody and they represent the warrior climate and the warrior culture that is the One Marine Expeditionary Force. And I can tell you it's real, it's powerful, I felt it every day in command, I feel it today, and I'm just really proud to have been a part of that. And I'll tell you, you take that climate, you take that culture, and you pair it with the incredible leaders at every echelon and every level here at One Mef. And in hindsight, my job was easy. Whether we were training forces, certifying them and deploying them in support of our global responsibilities, whether we were modernizing the force and implementing force design initiatives, whether we were aggressively campaigning west of the IDL with allies and partners, um, or, or whether we were really trying to re retain and re-enlist our very best, everybody in this command, all leaders at every level, they executed absolutely brilliantly. So all I really want to do from this point forward is just say thanks to a couple folks. To General Journey, sir, incredible boss. I appreciate the leadership. I appreciate the guidance. And I'll tell you what I really appreciate was the opportunity to walk around the fighting hole as we walk, you know, walk through some 48 issues. So, sir, I really do appreciate that. To the MSC commanders, uh, Major General Ben Watson, Major General Mike Orchilby, Brigadier General Andy Neeble, and our Mickey West commander, Brigadier General Woody Woodworth. Uh, you guys have been incredible teammates, incredible friends. Like I said, you made this job easy. I really appreciate it. I look forward to continuing the friendship going forward. And I look forward to catching most of you in DC when you piece of this summer. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, to the MEF staff, I'm not going to name everybody. I took the opportunity to thank everybody in person over the last week. I also addressed all the Marine sellers behind me yesterday. Uh, but just uh, three people I want to mention. Uh, Brigadier General Rob Fulford, my Deputy Commanding General. I could not have picked a better Deputy Commander for one month if I was even given the opportunity. And I wasn't even given the opportunity, but hands down, uh, the finest, incredible General Officer and Deputy that I could have ever asked for. So thanks a lot for that, Rob. Uh, second, I want to thank our Chief of Staff, Country Meyer, who's our Commander of Troops today. And the uh, incredible Chief of Staff, and you know, our President of the United States just nominated him for a star. No mistake there. Super well deserving. So I can see great things in the future. Uh, for Country Meyer. And to our Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Seau, impeccable in every regard. I couldn't ask for a better command Sergeant Major here at one Math. For everything he does for the command, everything he does for our Marines and each and every day. Uh, so thanks very much, Sergeant Major. Um, switching over to the waterfront. I know Admiral Boyle can't be here today. He's commissioned in his son in Newport as we speak. But I'll tell you the relationship with Third Fleet and ESG Commander Randy Peck is here. I've never seen it stronger. I'll tell you, we talk about things like naval integration. I don't talk about naval integration anymore. I talk about naval warfighting. Because that's what happens here in the SoCal area war between the United States Marine Corps and the United States Navy. And our boss, great to have you here, sir. I look forward to working with you uh, in the future, probably more than I have in my current role, uh, as we go after some of the real, wicked hard problems ahead of us. So thanks for being here. I really do appreciate it. Okay, now finally to my family. Uh, to Denise, Jasmine, and Brad, who can't be here today, uh, this is our third change of command in seven months. Uh, so I've uh, a lot of speeches. And I think I've said things like, uh, you're welcome, I said surprise, I said I love you, I said thank you for loving this life as much as I do. Uh, let me just tell you once again, honey, I love you, happy anniversary. Uh, and uh, the dog's driving his ears to go east. Uh, which I know you'll all appreciate. And of course, the Jasmine and Brad cannot do this without your love. Okay, so finally now to the shooter homes. Um, homie, Becky, uh, on behalf of Denise and I, welcome to the One Meth family. And, and, and congratulations on taking command of, of One Meth. Uh, what an amazing day. I'll tell you, I've got an incredible amount of confidence on where the meth is today. But I take even more comfort and have even more confidence knowing that you're in charge. And Denise and I, we're gonna watch with Envy from Washington, D.C. to see where you take this place. So really happy, uh, couldn't, couldn't have picked a better guy, and I'm really happy to be able to hand this off to you and see where you go. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's it for me. It has been an absolute honor, and it is now my honor to introduce to you the Commanding General of the One Marine Expeditionary Force, Lieutenant General Mike Sudan.
since 1969. For 55 years, the millions of Marines in one meth have brought security to Americans around the globe. They brought freedom to the oppressed. They brought hope to those that are in despair. And they killed those adversaries foolish enough to threaten America's or American security around the globe. Mr. Secretary, ACMAC, General Journey, Ms. Sue, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, distinguished guests, Marine sailors, families, friends, patriots all, we're honored. Your presence means the world to us here today. So thank you for joining us. I'd like to first start out by saying the Marines in front of you look remarkable. Eighth and I prides itself on being America's ceremonial drill uh, company and platoon in the United States, and they are wonderful. They have nothing on the Marines that you see standing in front of you today. So how about a big round of applause for those Marines? I think uh, it was uh, President Eisenhower that said, history does not entrust the care of freedom to the weak or the timid. And Mr. Secretary, your presence here today means the world to us. From when we stood in your office, met in your office, 1v1, no dog handlers, uh, you gave me your honest, uh, unvarnished thoughts, and I offered you mine, and uh, yours happened to win out. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, but sir, your presence here today means the world to us. We look forward to continued visits and thank you for serving as our secretary and thank you for covering our back and standing out in front when the time called for it. So thank you, sir. To the ADMAC, sir, our 37th Commandant, our Assistant Commandant, I guess I'm biting off on the secretary's words. The uh, sir, got to be said. Hey, thanks for reading those words exactly as my mom wrote them. So I greatly appreciate that. Sir, I've followed you anywhere. I've known you for a long time. It's been a humbling experience to work for you as our 37th Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps. Uh, I'm grateful that you're here. Uh, it means a lot to us, and thank you for that. To General Journey and Miss Sue, and, uh, we get to now speak back in aviator terms, right, Miss Sue? Uh, General Journey, I can't describe to you how excited Becky and I to be back on Team Journey. Uh, we learned so much from you in, in 2 Meth when we were there, uh, and we look forward to continuing to serve the FMF Marines in our nation under your leadership. So thank you. My direction is crystal clear for you, and I'm excited to get after it and get into the attack. To uh, General Gehring and Ms. Denise, Gila, Miss Denise, true friends, we love you guys. Uh, your leadership has been noteworthy and extraordinary, as well as your sacrifice. You mentioned three changes coming in over the last seven months. That is remarkable. You were never acting, you were always in the attack. And we're thankful for the turnover, we're thankful for your friendship, and we truly love you guys. Well done, well done. I'd like to uh, thank uh, my friends and family uh, who are here, who have stood beside us, in front of us, and behind us uh, for many decades now. Uh, your presence means the world to us, and I'm thankful that you're here. To Colonel Fleming, sir, Medal of Honor recipient action on November 26, 1968. It's an honor to gather with a hero of your stature, and thank you for your attendance today, sir. Thank you for what you bring and you show to these Marines that stand in front of you, ready to do our nation's bidding. I greatly appreciate it. To my family, my kids, uh, who are here today or watching in, uh, and that's John and his wife, Lindsay, to Roger, to Amy and her husband, Mike, to James and his uh, lovely wife, Amy, and to our son, Joseph. Uh, you give me the title that I cherish the most, and that's Dad. Thank you for who you are. I could not be more proud of who you are and what you are doing, so thank you for that. That leads me to uh, Rebecca. 
I think it was Audrey Hepburn uh, who said what, uh, something to the effect of what makes a woman beautiful. And I think what she said was, for beautiful eyes, see the goodness in others. For beautiful lips, speak only words of kindness. For a slim figure, share your food with the hungry. For beautiful hair, let the children run their fingers through it. And for poise, walk with the idea and the knowledge that you never walk alone. What you've done for our family as you stood in front, as you stood behind, as you stood next to us, has been remarkable. And the work that, that same work that you've done for families has been remarkable. I can't wait to get after it with you here in One Meth and bring that greatness to One Meth uh, and continue that greatness. I love you, baby, and thank you. Thank you for the support. To the 43,537 Marines and sailors that make up One Meth and the 35,076 family members that make up my one that make up One Meth, I am honored. I am honored to serve you. I promise you 24-7, 365. I stand in awe of your sacrifices that you've made and the sacrifices you will make. I can think of no finer fighting force. I will experience any hardship. I will endure any tribulation. I will endure any march to fight alongside of you any day, any time, in any climb, in any place. It's our humble privilege to join this team, to serve you, and I look forward, I truly look forward to writing this next chapter, as General Guerin said, with you and watching you as you add another great chapter to One Meth's legacy. We, One Meth is America's hammer. We come to fight and we come to win. Semper Fidelis, love you, let's get in the attack. Well done. Thank you, everybody. Now taking his position in the reviewing area is the Commanding General, One Marine Expeditionary Force, Lieutenant General Federer.
George Room, and you'll be yet. Right. 
Roberts, Brother Flynn, our members away. And